we've uh, spared no expense <laughs> to uh, get Tanner his own theme song here. Uh, we're just re- re- responding to what the listeners want. We uh, had a te- texter say, hey, uh, if we're going to have Tanner on each week, uh, we should get him his own theme song. So that's exactly what we did. Um, high-end production there. Oh, yeah. So uh, but right before we get uh, him on and uh, his thoughts on his uh, now weekly bumper music, a uh, quick check of the roads and weather. Roads are looking good right now. I-10 and I-110 not showing any major delays. We're also looking good on 29 and 90 throughout our area. And if you do see something else on the road slowing you down, just give me a call to 850-2626-111. For weather, we're looking great locally this weekend, but it is going to be hot. We're going to have high temperatures tomorrow, high of 98. Coming up tomorrow night, we do have a low of 79 with mostly clear skies. Tonight, we also have clear skies and a low of 79. It is partly cloudy throughout our area, 95 in Pensacola, 96 in Milton, 94 in Gulf Breeze with the heat index at 106. And this traffic and weather report brought to you by Bobby Likas Auto Service located on Davis Highway. I'm Gracie on News Radio 92.3, and now time for Tanner, Tanner, Tanner. Hey, wait, if you want, we can just have you sing it. Oh, we should or probably we... record it, and then... I like that even better. We'll sell CDs. All right. Well, Tanner, you have now heard the uh, introductory music that we will play for you each and every Friday. Your initial reaction to that? I have to say, Joe, I think like like most people's names, it, that is my least favorite word to hear or say, and I, I can't even tell you why, but I love the song, so keep it rolling. Very good, and uh, all credit to a listener, actually, who said, hey, why don't we get some uh, uh, theme song for the bumper music for Tanner segment, and so I was like, yeah, absolutely, and we found this masterpiece, so that is uh, set in stone Uh, from now until kingdom come or whenever we stop doing this, whichever comes first. Hopefully it's the former rather than the latter. So uh, let's start here as, um, of course, last Friday a little bit different. Uh, We were just a couple of hours removed from the uh, tragic shooting at the Home Depot. And uh, this story continuing with uh, several different facets. Uh, Earlier this week, Tanner, you talked to Sheriff Chip Simmons about uh, the nature of this investigation, Uh, specifically the mom, Sheila, who was arrested just a couple of hours after attending the balloon release for the victim. I thought it was interesting, uh, Channel 3 in the courtroom yesterday for the preliminary uh, here, the initial court appearance for Sheila and the defense attorney saying that the texts were misconstrued. Uh, What did you make of that? Yeah, that was a, a popular conversation this morning in the newsroom when we had brought that up. And uh, their, their biggest argument was just that these messages, Joe, were taken out of context. And I think it, it's clear through the, the text conversation what was said there. There, according to the sheriff, clearly is intent uh, enough to, to charge Sheila A.G. with principles of first-degree murder. And I think that's really where the case stands now. I talked to the state attorney uh, yesterday after that hearing. He didn't have any comment on that specific uh, phrasing of the text being taken out of context, but just said that uh, they're they're obviously looking at what they can, and there will be a a next court date set in September for both uh, suspects, Keith A.G. and Sheila A.G. With the state attorney's office, is there any conversation with Keith? about possibly pursuing the death penalty? I haven't heard that, Joe. As of right now, and I, I heard this from Judge Bo Dixon yesterday in court from Sheila A.G. specifically, that if convicted, she does face a mandatory life sentence. We don't know exactly the status of Keith A.G. or, or what kind of sentence he could be looking at if he's convicted. Uh, but uh, I think that, that could be on the table. Uh, we're just yet to see. Uh, The other uh, big story kind of came out of nowhere was the resignation of Tammy Greer, the uh, executive director of the Escambia Children's Trust. And I thought it was interesting that over the last couple of weeks, we have seen out of Pensacola Mayor D.C. Reeves uh, a bit more uh, animated when it comes to this particular topic. I, I would classify him normally in his conversations with the media as measured and calculated 
Uh, in this instance, though, with the Escambia Children's Trust, as the city's trying to get a, um, a children's center uh, to, to, rent, to, to purchase and renovate a building there and expressing frustration about the, the process and how it seemed like there was a lot of confusion and, and things like that. And I know that our uh, media partner, Studio 850, or media friends, I should say, um, they are essentially saying that it's directly related to the uh, conversations with, with the city of Pensacola over this. But Scammy Children's Trust moving forward, so what do you make of this whole saga this week? Yeah, Joe, you know, I can't really speak on the, the confusion in that whole thing other than we just have little information on, on the process. You know, the, the trust is now searching for a permanent executive director. Uh, we reached out to Tammy Greer, and all of she referred us to her statement, which was, I think I can uh, pull it up here, that she left for her own reasons. Uh, she I think cited the, a, a political culture she wasn't comfortable with there with the Children's Trust, and, and they're moving on. And that's really, from our perspective, what we know now. Uh, gave a 60-day notice will be paid through that 60 days, and the uh, the trust board voted unanimously to appoint new leadership. So as of right now, uh, I think they have an interim in there and just hoping to find that permanent solution as to why exactly they're left. And the mayor comments, so we're going to have to find that out. Tanner, we'll get you out here on a couple of uh, lighter subjects. So yesterday we talked, uh, Gracie and I, about this story that uh, a survey done, several countries involved in this, and overwhelmingly it appears that men are the one that say, I love you first. But in both of our cases, Gracie and my wife were the ones that did first. So I'm going to ask you, with you and your wife, who said it first, anything memorable, because... With my wife, she did it by accident and over voicemail. So anything like that uh, with you and your wife? Well, this might cause a debate, Joe. I know that Amanda is going to tell me she said it first, but I know for a fact I said it first. So and I'm not going to do a story on that, but I'm telling you personally, I know that I said it first. And as far as memorable stories go, I think the, the the memorable part is the two year old that we're dealing with uh, every single day or almost two. Uh, yeah, I, I can't tell you how many times I've said I love you to my wife and my daughter first, but we're now teaching her to say it, and they probably got me beat. They probably say it more first nowadays. I need to work on that. But that's a great question because I'm going to put her on the spot tonight before I listen to this, and I'm going to ask her. That she says. So, great question. Yeah. All right. And, and finally, so uh, I saw this story at uh, Channel 3 late yesterday. So, we've got a record setting swim taking place in the Gulf tomorrow. Um, we're raising funds for a uh, an animal shelter in town. It's a 20 mile swim, supposed to take about, I mean, like all day. It's like 5 a.m. to what? I think it's like 6 p.m. from Park yeah. East to the Navarre beach bridge. So, uh, I mean, uh, more power to the guy. I hope he's successful. Uh, there's no way in, you know what, where I'm getting any, anything close to that. I would ask you Tanner, if there is something, some sort of physical accomplishment or feat that you could set a physical record to raise money, what would that be? I think for me it would be a uh, number of times I could bounce a ping pong paddle up and keep a ping pong ball up in the air. Uh, I could maybe do that, but what about you? You got anything? Yeah. I, I, you know, I, the first thing that comes to mind is, is maybe a growing a mustache, and that's just something I would be willing to try. I, I don't think you grow a good mustache, Joe. And aside from that, I can't get the big bosses here to approve that for me. So I don't think I'll see that in the future. As far as more physical activity goes, I can't necessarily count my running anymore. I have, uh, I've run a few, few big races in my lifetime, but not recently. How about walking? I, I, I'll challenge anybody to a walk. That doesn't, that doesn't okay. uh, save me much. So if anybody's up for it, it could take obviously a whole lot longer than this talent swimmer. It could take tomorrow, but I, I would even, wouldn't even attempt like that that's incredible yeah so so i, th I think we've stumbled onto something that we may need to to press a little bit further 
Uh, you with a mustache. Um, I mean, Shugart's got one. So did that yep. like get grandfathered out with him, or what's the story there? I, I think so, and I need to get that clarified with him. I'll go see him in a few minutes and ask. Because look, I wanted a mustache for a long time. I was fortunate enough to get a little time off when my daughter was born. I didn't shave my face for a few weeks, and, and everybody around me just thought it was terrible, Joe. I mean, my brother bagged me about it for a long time, but I'm going to keep on pushing. And one of these days, I'm, I'm going to come out from the smoke, and I'm going to have nice facial hair, Joe. One of these days. I don't uh, know when it'll be. I'm thinking next Blue Angel air show uh, with you and a <laughs> pair of aviators <laughs> in your Blue Angel uh, snapback hat. I think that's the... Uh, yeah, we, we, we have some time to prep for that. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can get that in the work. All right. Well, hey, Tanner, we'll let you go on that. Uh, I'm not sure what the story is with the uh, the phone there. We had a little bit of interference there towards the end, but uh, we'll try to do better next week on that. Uh, I think it may have been on our end. I'm not sure. But, to Tanner, thanks so much for the time, as always, and we'll talk to you next week, okay? Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. Yeah, you too, Tanner. So uh, 448 here at News Radio. I have one one comment on his mustache. Um, we'll get an update on the roads and weather first. Well, our roads are looking good. I-10 and I-110 not showing any major slowdowns, as well as 29 and 90. Of course, typical afternoon traffic throughout Winhaven Beach. Uh, that is going to be due to just the everyday afternoon traffic. And then we do have a small accident. That Again, westbound right in front of Winhaven Animal Hospital, we do have an accident that's causing some afternoon delays on 98 westbound. See anything else? Give a call to 850-2626-111. And for weather, we are actually going to get a real quick update from Alan Strom on W. EAR. It looks like a nice weekend around here with lots of sunshine, likely dry too. I don't think we'll see any rain Saturday, just a 20% chance on Sunday. And those highs are getting back up into the mid 90s. Heat index values will run in the triple digits, maybe up around 105 or so. We're watching the tropics. We might see low pressure move over the Gulf next week. We'll keep you updated. I'm Chief Meteorologist Alan Strum with your WEAR News weather forecast. Thanks so much, Alan. It's 95 in Pensacola, 96 in Milton, and 94 in Gulf Breeze. Heat index at 106. I'm Gracie on News Radio 92.3. So radio news is like a text message compared to the newspaper where, like, you know, it's long form or TV where, you know, there's – there's a bit more time, you know, radio news at uh, most, you got two and a half, three minutes. You're trying to fit in, you know, several stories. So there, there really isn't a whole lot of opportunity, not that there never is, but a whole lot of opportunity to really dig in to stuff, do like investigative journalism mm -hmm. that may change with this mustache policy over at channel three, because shoe guards has got one and it's nice, but <laughs> I want to see Tanner with a mustache, and I I, I want him to be able to do that. So uh, I may uh, use the full resources of the News Radio 1620 News Department to do a deep dive in the uh, mustache policy with our partners at Channel Three and try to get to the bottom of why Tanner is not allowed to have a mustache. It, it can't seems simply biased to it me. is, uh, and I wonder if uh, civil and human rights are not being violated. Uh, by this so <laughs> the thing is though not you know if tanner wants a mustache he should be able to get one with the people with the lighter hair the that's, mustaches really sneak up and on that you. may be so on TV, the reason it's gonna look like a little shadow that's right that, and, and like, that oh, may no, be it a, said tanner if you had dark hair yeah you could do it um so yeah i don't know but uh so that might that's be discriminatory it. <laughs> that's what that is 4.51, we'll take our final break this hour. We've got um, Wacky and Weird.